arc cosine of negative 11 over the square root of 50 times the square root of 109. Now I have a question. I know this is on the test because I remember doing this problem and I didn't have a calculator at the time, but I was able to determine which of the answers it was. Can you tell me where this angle is going to be when it pops out? It's in quadrant two. So even if you don't have a calculator, you should know that this is in quadrant two and I was actually able to determine that was the only possibility because it was the only one in quadrant two. I was like, oh, that works. But let's see what it actually is. Now here's where I believe most of them are asked for in degrees, but I won't swear to it because I was wrong last time. Okay, we're going to divide by the square root of 50 times square root of 109. One hint. I don't know how much of it is really a hint, but a tip. A lot of people get wrong answers here because they put this into their calculator wrong. What is one thing you have to remember to make this come out right? You got a denominator here of two things multiplied together. You're going to have to have parentheses around it when you put it into your calculator, otherwise it is not going to see those as both being in the denominator. I'm going tell several people that lately, so I figure we should know. Uh, yeah, that's good. All right, now that we know how to find the angle, let's look to see if two things are parallel, orthogonal, or neither. Now, we know how to tell if two things are orthogonal, yes? What did we find? Did we actually have to go through and find the angle? Yes, no, maybe? Did we have to find the angle? What did we do back when we did I dot J? What did we get? We got zero. So we can find if things are orthogonal by just calculating the dot product. If it comes out to be zero, then we get to stop. If it's not zero, then we have to keep going. Because that means it's not orthogonal. What do you think is going to be necessary for things to be parallel?
we're studying this weekend? Anybody want to guess again? Guess that one? No, it's not negative one. It's negative one. So if we get negative one here, then we also know that we have parallel vectors. It's Friday, it's almost over, and you are, you guys are forgetting it just a tad too soon. You have to keep it up there until 9 p.m. Thursday night, okay? So, all I have to do is calculate this. I need the dot product, I need the magnitudes. If the dot product's zero, I don't even need to bother with the magnitudes. So go right ahead and calculate the dot product, the magnitudes, and get to this point if necessary. And so, let's calculate the dot product. U dot D is going to give us 7 times 21 plus, 21, plus negative 3 times negative 9, which is 174. Is that right? I remember. 174. Obviously, they're not orthogonal. So now let's take the magnitude of U. It's going to be the square root of 7 squared plus negative 3 squared, which will be 49 plus 9, which is 58 under the square root symbol. And the magnitude of B is the square root of 21 squared plus negative 9 squared, which is... square root of 522. So, I'm okay if you remember this formula for doing it and don't go through the rest of the process. So, the cosine of theta is equal to 174 <coughs> over the magnitude, oh, well, I have the magnitude. The magnitude of B is the square root of 58 times the square root of 522. When I calculate that, what do I get? One. So the cosine of theta equals one. That means they are parallel. By the way, did anybody look at these and tell me they were going to be parallel? Three times seven is 21, and three times negative three is negative nine. Same thing with the slope. You guys might have noticed that. Oh, Sunday, come prepare.